My name's Nadine Sangu, and I'm going to be sharing some poems from my new collection, Blood Songs, which was published by Tapsol TV. The first poem I'm going to share with you is called Janet Wishart, 1597. A mother's body is stitched together over a lifetime. Maternity, the heft of it, wefted into us for our ain birth. Nay much wonder we become monsters. Fit else would you cry us, this mislucket bunch, sutured and butchered under a coody patriarch's hand. Life is sma, fichy, rochsome. Swithering atween the deal ye can and the een ye hae still to meet. I wad it the evil mere nimmel on his feet. All neck had a life free of drudgery, sappy and succulent, dreeping with sovereignty. Afore I died for thirst, I slaked his hand clean. Fish and gossip, that was a wifey's main trade, but I trocked fear on drich mirkit days. Sealant prayers spun in the dark, snout after me, rugged the hem on my skirts. I bozied them into me, gave life to rank fantasies. A mither's body isna hers to hud on to. Eens I brought their mercs and wishes to the fore, the fauk of the tune burnt the womb that fed them. In the thick of the flame, my creators have claimed me. In death, I am baptised, washed in the ruby slunk o' oh, every monster wifey. Lamia, Babanshi, Gorgon, Kionach, bleed slaughters, bairn snatchers, Mane killers, bitchum sinners, their deathly reed lullabies sing me to the bottom o oh, hag shapit words. Women, mither, witch, fit ever she fits. Jean Craig, 1784. I was brought up to fear God. This was afore the word love was pronounced like it is the day, for we used infinite flower letter configurations to squish suffering into. A righteous path was rolled out afore me, but I traipsed after ambition and pride. The deal curled up inside my lug, the why she spake about love was queer, as if it were something you were owed that you could just gee to yourself. She told me I could mark my ain happiness, though on wheel dressed wifeys were not only better than me, so I stole a piece of linen to prove I could be some day. But my sweet, loving God was raging, unworthy and clarty with sin, for else could I dee but die for him. The city his teeth, the folk need to eat. I feed them my bleed, pray it learns their bairns to keep they makin' ill. My body will mind them, nay to listen, when the deal creeps in. That to love yourself above ahin else is a great muckle sin. So the poems in Blood Songs are in both English and in Scots. And I really wanted to write across both those languages because I just thought it would make for a more interesting collection. I feel that when I write in Scots, there's a lot of images and ideas and um, feelings that I think would necessarily come up if I was just writing in English. So um, definitely the process of writing in Scots for me, um, I think has really broadened um, what I can access in, in terms of my creative practice. So I really hope that when, as readers reading that, um, the same thing happens and there's this kind of sense of things broadening and opening up if it's maybe a language that you're not familiar with, or equally if there are words in there that you maybe heard in your childhood and don't use very much or kind of feel like home, but you're not, um, you don't hear them every day. Um, so definitely the Scots 
language aspect of it, I'm I'm hoping that there's a lot that people can can get from that when they read that, regardless of how familiar they are with the language. Um, I'm not really very precious about my poems. Once I write them, they're sort of just, I feel like they don't really belong to me anymore. So I'm always very interested to hear how people have felt when they were reading them or what they've, you know, what they read into it. Maybe that's not necessarily things that I had written into it even. So that's always a, yeah, I'm very interested in that relationship between writer and reader so yeah I really hope that people just get whatever it is that they need from the from the from the collection I think more than anything um a lot of the poems that I've written in the book are based on sort of mythological or historical figures um, and I that's something that has come up because I feel like I'm responding to maybe a certain perspective that hasn't maybe been shown historically or just I'm very interested in a new way of looking at these archetypes that we're really familiar with. Again, because I think that's something that people can relate to, um, these kind of universal things. And definitely if you've been left out of how those things are represented, it's nice to maybe have a different perspective on that. I'd say that my writing is inspired a lot by place and um, even if it doesn't come up explicitly I think especially when I'm writing in Scots I really feel the Aberdeenness <laughs> um, the, the the Scottishness of things coming through um, so yeah just a uh, place and setting Aberdeen has really influenced a lot of what I've been writing recently and that I think definitely comes in the book. Um, I think I'm very lucky in Aberdeen that there are so many great writers and um, creative people going about that I just know and that are my friends so I've been really hugely inspired by the artistic community in Aberdeen, whether that's fellow writers and poets or musicians, drag artists, there's a very close community and there's a lot of working across disciplines as well, which is really which I find uh really helpful for my process to not just think about, oh I'm gonna write a poem, what does it mean to be a writer? I like to think about um yeah how different art forms can maybe influence my, my writing process. And the highlight of my debut publishing experience has probably just been seeing my poems make people feel things, I think. I think sometimes writing can feel very lonely and solitary. And if you just have the poems in your own head or on your computer screen and they're not really out there, you don't really see how people engage with them and that's kind of the I feel that's the whole point of writing well at least why I like to write is to really just it's kind of just like having a conversation with with others so it's been really nice to share the work and also just see and hear how that work has been received which is which is really nice. And it's been very strange to see people, people have shared pictures with me of like things they've underlined. Um and like and I'm I'm a big annotator. I have like and lots of books I've written notes and I've underlined things. So seeing people do that to my own work is very surreal. And yeah, just just really nice again to see how the work has made people feel and what it makes them think of. Um so yeah, I think that's that's a very nice feeling and it's it's a very strange feeling, but it's a very nice feeling. My favourite book so far in 2024, I just bought, today, I just bought Glyph by Ali Smith and I started reading it and it is wonderful. And I'd be really excited about um, this book when I, when I first heard it was coming out. I think that Ali Smith is like one of the like greatest living contemporary writers um and I just yeah I, I think she just really taps into kind of all the effortlessly all these universal feelings as a human experience 
and her but the it, it's it's so um it's so broad ranging in its scope her work i think but at the same time it it feels so it's like small and yet it's big there's like the every the everydayness of it but then you get these kind of big grand ideas coming out and glyph so far has not disappointed i'm really enjoying it and um as soon as i've stopped recording this i'm going to get back to it and i think by the time i finished it it might be up there in one of my favorite books mm -hmm.